I've been a tinkerer for as long as I can remember, from finding VCRs by the side of the road, to open them up and retrieve the precious bearings inside the drum, to repairing 3D printers and building combat robots. I just love to make things and to make things, well, you need tools. And here on YouTube, there are countless videos telling you what tools you should buy if you like to tinker. But I have noticed recently that there's tools I've used for over 10 years that people don't really mention. So this video is dedicated to them. These are some of my favorite tools that are seldom mentioned that you really should take a look at because some of these tools have gotten me out of very sticky situations and I couldn't live without them. Let's get started. This is a ratcheting right angle screwdriver. It mounts hex bits just like any standard screwdriver that you can replace the bits in. And this lets you get into tight places and ratchet up or undo fasteners. Now this is a power upgrade to the humble Allen key. The Allen key does the same thing, but it doesn't ratchet. We all know those situations where there's a faster in a tiny, difficult to reach area where you just wish you could get some ratcheting action, but you have to use this crappy Allen key and lift it, move it, lift it, move it. These are a few dollars online. There'll be links in the description below and where you can find tools. And these have saved me every single time. So I keep these on hand. I have a few of them lying around the house and they are a power upgrade to an Allen key. But I hear you guys saying, yes, that's very handy, but it can't let you get into small areas like an Allen key can if you want to tighten up or undo fasteners. Well, absolutely, which is why you should ditch your Allen keys altogether for these. These are hex drivers, and I mentioned these in my book, The Ultimate Book of 3D Printing Tips and Tricks, which I highly recommend checking out below because I have a whole section on all the other tools you should check out. But look, I'm going to level with you. If you like to make anything, and that includes just like putting together IKEA furniture, you're worth it. Upgrade to a set of hex drivers because these things suck. They're cheap, they work. But save your wrists, doing things up like this versus this, no, it's awful. Get some hex drivers, you'll thank me later. Next up, we have side cutters. Yes, most 3D printers come with side cutters, but this one is really important. The side cutters that 3D printers come with are garbage. They are absolutely rubbish. The jaws are rarely aligned. They're made from soft steel and they can't do much of anything. So what I recommend is finding yourself a nice pair of side cutters to keep on hand for when you want to do delicate electronic work. I've shown this pair of mini flush cutters on the channel before. They're from Lindstrom. They cost me $100 Australian back in 2008. They're still almost as perfect as the day I bought them. Now, you have to be really careful with side cutters. Don't cut anything that's hardened like piano wire because that will destroy even the most expensive pair. But what I recommend doing is having these crappy ones on hand for just rough cutting plastic and supports and you know, cutting wires, and then having a nice pair for when you want to do delicate electronic work and keep them dedicated for those different jobs. Don't ruin your nice ones. Use your crappy ones if you want to do just crappy work, but use your nice ones for delicate work. And I highly recommend getting a nice pair. They don't have to be Lindstrom. They're very expensive, but just something that's a little bit better than the crap that comes with 3D printers. It means wire stripping is so much easier by hand than using the crappy ones. And I always keep mine close by. Next up, we have paint markers. Now you might be wondering, what? Well, that's not a tool. Why do you have paint markers in a tool list video, Angus? Well, these are actually very handy because paint markers, unlike permanent markers, write on anything. And I mean anything. Metal that's got a bit of oil on it, doesn't matter. They'll write on it. Glass, they'll write on it. Plastic, 3D prints, paint markers will write on it. And they don't run as much as permanent markers I've found. So when I'm marking 3D prints when I'm doing reviews because it's really easy to mix them up, I'll use paint markers because it makes it really easy to identify. And the mark that these leave is really, really durable. So if you're building or repairing anything and need to mark like a fastener or a certain part that goes in a certain orientation and you're finding that permanent markers just aren't permanent enough for your application, try paint markers. These are incredibly durable. And as long as you keep the cap on, they last for a long time, I've found. They don't actually dry out nearly as much as you'd expect a paint marker to dry out. Next up, the humble deburring tool. I'll be honest with you guys, I only bought one finally two years ago. I don't know why, I just, I thought I didn't need one. I was using a Stanley knife to remove like the edge of brims and things from prints and to clean up parts. But nah, these make my life so much easier and it's so much safer than trying to use a Stanley knife to scrape the edges of prints because 
we know how soft plastic is. The knives bite in and then they just skip. And then before you know it, you've sliced through your finger and you're off to the emergency department. We don't want that. These deburring tools are very sharp, but the blade's protected with that curve and they do a fantastic job cleaning up the edges of prints that have been a bit too close to the print bed. And of course, for all of your building needs, we need to just make the edge of a filed part a little bit cleaner, hit it with a deburring tool and you're done. Grab one of these, they cost nothing. And yeah, I should have bought one a very long time ago. And last but certainly not least is a set of tools that I use to destructively remove fasteners. Sometimes, especially with combat robotics or if you're taking apart things you find by the side of the road, there's fasteners that you just can't get out conventionally. They might have weird security style profiles that you can't get a screwdriver into, or they might be corroded beyond belief, or in combat robots, they might just simply be damaged. So how do you get them out? Well, let me show you this. Now, if you know what this is, like the actual name for this tool, leave it in the comments below. Because let me tell you a story. I went to the Easter show years and years ago here in Australia. It's like a county fair or a royal show. It's where, you know, you have all these displays of the biggest pumpkin and the best fruit cake. And then you have all these vendors. And this is a classic like snake oil salesman vendor with tools where like, oh, it's the best drill bit in the world. It's the best hacksaw blade in the world. And he had these things all the way out to this. These are designed to destructively remove bolts. And you might think, okay, that's from a fair, the, the marking is matched, like they don't have a real brand name. They must be garbage. No. And the way they work is really clever. So they're made from this like forged steel. And they've got this hex profile. So they'll work really, really well on like hex bolts, but they also work on like round shafts if the shaft's not too hardened. Because what happens is as you put it in place and rotate it, the actual rotation force tightens it up against that, that fastener and bites in destructively and wrenches it and you can remove it like that. And these have saved my life many times over the years. The little tiny one I use for like the much smaller bolts on the robots and this one I've used on cars. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know you got rusted bolts. I put a link in the description below of what I found that's similar, but I can't find these exact ones. Again, it was a random stand at an Easter show over 10 years ago, and they probably were just upsold from somewhere in China in the first place. But yeah, the guy did a good job. He sold me on them, and I was actually very happy with the purchase, which is almost unheard of from those kinds of situations. And to supplement the removal of stubborn fasteners, I highly recommend getting yourself a pair of these. These are fastener removal pliers. So they are designed to grab onto, bite into fasteners or anything that you need to just destructively remove and pull it out. But they've got this really cool profile at the front here, which you won't find on any other pair of plier that's designed to grab fasteners from the top down and then you can twist them and remove them. These are fantastic for removing those annoying security screws that you can find on various things that are trying to keep you out. These can bite onto them and then twist them out. I keep this on hand whenever ever I go to a robot combat event because fasteners inevitably get destroyed by other robots' weapons and these can get in and remove them, but they have a myriad of uses to get into stuff and I highly recommend getting them. They are not super cheap, but these are very high quality and again, last me a very long time. If you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing to Maker's Muse if I aim to empower your creativity through technology and tools. And if you wanna see how I use these tools, then maybe consider checking out this video of my latest ant weight combat robot build. These things are tiny. They only weigh 150 grams, but the power to weight ratio is through the roof. And I think you'll find the video really entertaining. Thanks for watching. Bye.